we're in Lima, Peru, and for the next 48 hours, we are going to do as much as we can in the city. We have a full agenda plan with different cultural sites, lots of food, museums, biking, parks, and so much more. With that being said, let's start the adventure. Our first stop is going to the historic center, which is about 30 minutes away by car from where we're at. So we got a taxi to the main plaza. Lima is huge and I honestly had no idea, but it kind of makes sense. <laughs> it's, it's a very big city. <laughs> I also didn't know this either. <laughs> One of my favorite things is just going to like a city square because you really get to see like how like they built the city sort of around this area. All the architecture is always just on point. It's kind of sad because they don't make them like they used to. But this building behind me looks like it has some importance of what I'm gonna compare to the White House. There's a bunch of guards, there's a bunch of police presence, there's huge country flags, really detailed and just beautiful building. Honestly, just kind of cool to be around and just take it all in. It's just so pretty. Look at this pretty door with the purple flowers and the details. And everywhere you look, you're like, oh, look at that. Ooh, look at that. It's just so pretty. Right next to the main square is the Basilica and Covenant of San Francisco. And this is where they have the catacombs. So we're gonna go inside and I hear it's a beautiful church. And I don't doubt it because everyone here looks pretty beautiful. <laughs> so let's go see. So you have to be with the tour group to go into the catacombs in the museum of the church. It's at 11.15 and it will go into the time of our next event. So we might come back later to go on the tour. We can still go into the church and look around the church. So, let's go see the church. So they were doing mass in the church and we quickly got to peek around. It was beautifully decorated, but then we decided to leave. And now we are heading to our food tour. It's a really pretty building behind me. I thought it was gonna be a church and I look inside and it's like a supermarket. <laughs> it's so funny. It's just like clothes and common goods. Just a regular building that has a beautiful outside. <laughs> So I'm running late to the food tour, but look how beautiful all these buildings and architecture are. We just stumbled across another random square, but just had to get it in. The spicy one. Mm. Is it spicy? Not too bad. I like that. Okay. <laughs> Ooh. Sometimes it's too much oh. spicy. <laughs> <laughs> That is a nice level of spice. <laughs> nice. We've been seeing these everywhere and we've never gotten them. They're the quail eggs. Mm. This classic, free range. <laughs> Organic, there's no farm of quail eggs. You know, That's like delicious. You just, um, All right, Brandon, are you gonna do it? He doesn't like deviled or hard boiled eggs. Yeah, I totally don't. Do it, Brandon. I'm nervous. <laughs> I didn't want to scare myself into. <laughs> oh, that's good. Who's the also? It's called Umita. Yeah. Mm. Delicious. Made of corn. What do you think? Is it cooked in? Like, how do they cook it? Is it steamed? Yeah, it's steamed. That's really steamed, good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like it a lot. This is um, purple corn pudding, <gasps> and this is called arroz con leche, which means rice with milk. Oh, okay. These desserts are the Afro-Peruvian culture. When we have slaves, they give the that is the, the what they discard of the purple corn and the rice like and also the milk that was not good they give to them so they boil the milk with the rice and they made this dessert and they mash the, the uh, corn the and they wow. made this pudding. Uh, that is so good. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> really interesting. That's the snack. That's it. <laughs> That's a good snap. So, I don't like olives either. I guess we're doing it. Olives and cheese. Which one first? 
the cheese. Okay, good, 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 good. Yeah. <laughs> you only have oh, compliment. Oh, it's good for someone that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay guys, this is a food called Chirimoya. 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 It's only from Peru. You won't find anywhere. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> what? They say it tastes like bubble gum. Yeah! This is crazy. Mm. <laughs> I've never had a fruit that tastes like this mm. before. Whoa! It tastes like bubble gum. That is, and it's like, it's like super soft, but it's not like watermelon where it's like melty. It's like a marshmallow texture. Whoa, mm -hmm. you're right. I've never had texture on a fruit like that. I don't even know how to explain it. Wow. It's like a passion fruit. Oh. It's only from Peru. So you take it a little bit out because it's thick. And now you slurp it. Exactly. Mm. <laughs> and I don't eat them. I just flip them. Yeah. That's don't nice. Don't them, just eat them. <laughs> That's nice. It's like a like snot. <laughs> no, this is yummy. It's like not like too sweet. The flavor is not overpowering. It's a delicious fruit. What is it? It's like a crispy peanut. It's like a peanut cracker. <laughs> What's wrong? Is that a good description? Mm -hmm. Exploring this market was a unique experience as we likely would have missed out on many of the things we tried and the stories behind their origins. After the market, we headed to Lima's Chinatown. You had to touch the lion for good luck. <laughs> <laughs> So it all in one. <laughs> what? <laughs> mm. I love dumplings. <laughs> mm. That is delicious. Very salty, but holy crap. A lot of flavors in there. That's so refreshing. It's just like, ah. <laughs> it's like I'm eating the fruit while I'm just drinking it. It's so good. If we went through Chinatown by ourselves, we'd be like, <laughs> running out. <laughs> be like, we don't know what to do. There's too many people. Get a little bite of everything. Get a little fish in there. Beans and corn. Dude, this is delicious. <laughs> Yum. That's a 10 out of 10 for me. Really? Oh yeah. It's like citrusy, but not too citrusy. The fish is good. The beans, the corn, the onions. Mm. Healthy bite. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> oh, that has a little kick. I love antique food. Mm. Mm. Is this hard too? No. What's this? It's like rubbery. Mm. Mm. Do you know what it is? Guts. <laughs> what kind of guts? <laughs> <laughs> That's a uh, belly. That uh, oh. stomach. Ooh. Yeah. What? And you probably thought we were done with food, but we're not. There's this churro place that we wanted to go to in the morning, but we had to go because we were doing our food tour. But we got there this afternoon and the line was so long. So you know it's gonna be a good churro. And they've been making churros for over 50 years. So they probably have it down to a T, but we got three different types. The original, chocolate, and white churro. Mm, wow. That's incredible. And part of the reason why we kept our food tour going is because they typically don't incorporate desserts in them. But this thing is perfect. The open air museum is to like preserve this ancient wall of Lima that was used to protect from pirate attacks, battles back in the day. Most of it was destroyed, but there's a few parts that still remain, so they have it like closed off 
and people can come and see it. It's pretty cool. And they also had a museum in here that gave just more information about Lima. And it's just a pretty cool checkout spot. We came to Love's Park for the sunset because it's a beautiful viewpoint and there's a cool sculpture, but it is very cloudy. The sun went away, so I don't think there's gonna be a sunset. So we're gonna try to get even closer to the ocean and just take in the waves. I see surfers out there. It's a, just a nice vibe over here. Sunset vibes are unmatched right now. <laughs> Incredible, really. But watching the surfers is just so much fun. <laughs> it is. And the nice ocean breeze. It's actually kind of warm right now. I'm not cold, so that's a plus. And we have one more spot that we're gonna check out for the night. And from what I've heard and seen on the internet, it looks pretty cool. So let's go check it out. The Magic Water Circuit. So this is like a big water show, apparently. And there's fountains everywhere. There's water shooting. There's lights. We're gonna go explore the park and look at all the fountains. Funny story. On the sign it said there was a show at 8.15 and we thought it meant fountain show. So we were standing at Fantasy Fountain for like 15 minutes waiting for this fountain show to go off. There was another thing going on and I brought my phone over and I was like trying to get a video of it. Oh. Oh wait, it is actually a show here, okay. <laughs> okay, now there is actually a show. They said 8.15 but now it's 8.30 and we just left. Was there was a show and it was pretty awesome. They used like the mist as a projection screen and they like told the history of Peru, I'm pretty sure is what was going on. And just a lot of cool animations. And then they had the fountains do their thing. And it was, it was wild. It was about a 15 minute show. And now we have some more fountains to catch before we call it a night. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, we got pretty wet at the end because that's where people are trying to take photos at the end of the tunnel and the people in the tunnel were trying to get out and the slower you went, the more wet you got. Still pretty cool though. <laughs> Good morning! Our first stop is some more ruins and they're actually excavating the area so we can't go in by ourselves so we're going with a tour group that starts in like 20 minutes and it's going to be about an hour long exploring these ruins and learning something about what was going on here. And it's funny the food tour guide yesterday was like they say in like Peru any stone you turn over it's probably some ruin. <laughs> so it's just like they're all over the place like this is literally right in the the middle of the city of Lima. It took us like five minutes to walk here from our Airbnb. I'm excited to see what's it all about. That site was very interesting. It predates the Inca period. We also learned that there was three different like groups of people that lived there. The Lima, and I don't know the other two. And it was just very interesting to learn about the history of it. Honestly, one of the fascinating things to me was just how they built the bricks by hand and then they would let it dry out. In the summer, they would let it dry out like two to four days. In the winter, they would dry out for two weeks because of the humidity. The way they layered it, it was called the bookcase method. And there's also like slightly angled because it helps with earthquake and tremors. But now we're about to go try a Peruvian delicacy that we have not had yet. Everyone we've talked to who's Peruvian has always been asking us, have we had it yet? Have we had it yet? And we <laughs> hadn't had it yet. And today's our last day in Peru. So we have to have it. <laughs> Y 
this dish that we have is not the delicacy that we were talking about earlier, but it is something that we've seen a lot frequently. It's like a stuffed pepper, but a Peruvian style stuffed pepper. And what looks to be like all gratin potatoes or like thick slices of potatoes stuffed with a bunch of cheese. Brandon described it as it looks like a cheese lasagna. It smells really good. <laughs> Yeah, mm. That's really good. Like the meat in there, I think it's like a sausage. And it's got a spice to it. So it's like um, very delicious. Mm -hmm. mm. This is yummy. The delicacy we we're talking about is cooey, which is guinea pig. And I've never had guinea pig before, and neither has Brandon. When it came out, it was just like the whole guinea pig. People around us were like, no, go have them cut it up. So we came back, and it's all cut up. And now I'm going to have my first bite of cooey. The skin's really crispy. It's kind of like a greasy meat but it's pretty good. It kind of tastes like chicken. <laughs> it's like KFC. <laughs> <laughs> Kui was super interesting to eat. I couldn't eat where they cut it in half and like where the skull would be in brains. There were still teeth in there. That was a little much for me. And eating it was a slight challenge because of all the different small bones. Like the fatty pieces and the skin were super crispy. And it really did taste like chicken, but it's probably something I wouldn't order again. I would agree with that. You know, it was a good experience and it was good. But again, I probably wouldn't eat it. It's just too much work to eat. Probably something that's gonna be my first and last time trying, but I'm glad we did it. Me too. Me too. Apparently we're really close to Kennedy Park, which is like a park that is home to a lot of cats. There are a ton of cats in this little park. There's like eight right here and like this one tiny little section that you, we can see right here. But they have like little cat houses and they have bowls of cat food and water throughout the park for the cats to have. So it's just like a little cat sanctuary. It's pretty cute. <laughs> now will Brandon get bit by a cat? <laughs> biking check so far. Brakes are kind of meh, no helmet, and I just had to fix my seat. <laughs> Off to a solid start. We've been biking around for a little bit and we are just doing a little bike trail that goes like up and down the coast. And right now we're really like high on the cliff. I'm not sure if this one actually goes down to like the bottom right by the ocean. We're just gonna meander, pull off when we wanna pull off, take in the views and just soak in the day. We've only been biking for about five minutes or so. We already stopped. Not even five minutes. It might be a long bike ride, <laughs> but you know, it's part of the ride, right? Life's a journey, not a destination. We're about a mile in and we stopped for the essentials. Dessert, bathroom, and a great view. Honestly, this bike ride has been a lot of fun and we gotta keep going. There's still so much more to see. And I keep wanting to stop. <laughs> <laughs> also true. Well, this is problematic. We're both currently trying to get our bikes out and we can't, so we'll keep trying, maybe? So long story short, so we basically just made a new account under my name and we're back on the road. <laughs> Next stop, check out the lighthouse. <laughs> One cool thing I love about each of these parks is all pretty consistent. There's some sort of sports happening in the background. There's people taking pictures, enjoying the view, having a picnic, hanging out with a group of friends, all of the above. And now we're back on the road again. So we didn't make it to the ocean, but we made it to the Bridge of Sighs, which is in a different neighborhood that we were just at. And it's just filled with beautiful buildings. There's music going on. Just a nice little stop. Well, that bike ride went by way too quick and it was honestly a lot of fun. And we just love Lima. I don't think 48 hours 
was enough time spent here. It looks like we either have to come back or plan something else in Peru. I know. I could have <laughs> spent like probably like two months in Peru. But sadly, we are leaving tonight to go back to the United States. And then after that, we are headed to Europe. Also, let us know what we should and shouldn't include in the videos. Any feedback is helpful because like part of us wants to include travel days, but they can be a little hectic. Maybe it's nice to see. Do we highlight more of how we're doing our budget? I don't know. There's so many things we can show that we don't. So let us know. But until then, see y'all in Europe. That's wild. We're going to Europe. <laughs>